Okay. Can you tell me your full name? Byron George Dumdai. And when were you born and I where? Was, I was born in the year 1923, December. And where were you born at? I was born in uh, Blue Earth County, McPherson Township at home. Okay. Um, and what is your age currently? In, uh, in one month and uh, two days, I'll be 97. <laughs> nice. Um, what was your full rank and what part of the armed services were you in? I was in the U.S. Merchant Marine and we weren't, we weren't really ranked because we were non-military, but I graduated from radio school as an ensign. Okay. And uh, you could wear civilian clothes or you could wear a uniform, either way. Okay. All through my service. Oh, nice. Um, okay, so uh, what was your role in the unit that you were in? Every ship I was on, I was chief radio operator. Okay. Yep. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about your early childhood, where you grew up? What do you remember about the, the area? Memorable characters? Well, kind of we were on the farm. There were three brothers and one sister. I was the uh, second youngest. And uh, we lived on a nice farm. It was a small farm, but it was on... It was right on the Waseca County, Blue Earth County line in Minnesota. We played a lot of ball, we played a lot of hide and seek, we played a lot of things and uh, went to school in Janesville, Minnesota. Actually went to country school for the first eight years. Okay. And then went to uh, public schools at Janesville, Minnesota and I graduated uh, I started when I was 12, I graduated when I was 16 okay. from the high school. Nice. And I wasn't needed at home, so I took my first job in Waseca, Minnesota, in a bowling alley. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, what, were, what was your parents' names and what did they do for work? Well, Frank P. Dumdai was the farmer, okay. and Augusta Amelia was his wife, and she. Uh, she was a nurse in her younger days, oh, okay. and she nursed all her life, and she lived to be 96. Wow. But he, uh, he, he was been a farmer all his life. Okay. Did you have any siblings? Yes, we had a son and a daughter. The son is the oldest, living in Jacksonville, Florida, has three children, they were thinking about coming out this Christmas, but we just decided not to sure. because of the virus. Yeah. And my daughter lives here in Brooklyn Center where I lived for years. Did you have any brothers and sisters growing up? Three brothers and one sister. Did, did any of them serve in World War II? Well, we, my one brother was in the Army. My youngest brother, younger brother, was in the Navy. And we all three had our picture taken in Washington, D.C. at the, uh, at the, uh, we were fl the flown memorial? out there. Oh, sure. The, yeah. the, the memorial? The memorial. At yeah. the memorial. Yep. Nice. That must have been. A they, they took a lot of pictures. Three I brothers. Bet. Three <laughs> brothers. Nice. It was about four or five years ago now. Do you have any particularly fond memories from your childhood? Well, we had a pony and we had a we had a racehorse too that we hooked up to a cutter, and uh, everything went smooth in those days. Yeah. Uh, very few arguments, you know what I mean. And uh, we'd go to dances together and stuff like that. So uh, my mother was pretty much. Uh, could take care of everything. Oh, good. Um, did you did you have any uh, childhood best friends that you chummed around with? Well, I had a, I had some in the service, of course. Yeah. But I had 
I had uh, one guy from Esterville, Iowa, some that graduated with me at radio school in oh, Boston yeah. Harbor. Okay. <coughs> and I kept in touch with quite a the uh, most of them are dead, I'm sure. Oh, sure. Um, uh, can you tell me what it was like to um, grow up during the Depression and live during the Depression? My folks would have an insurance policy and they'd cancel it. They'd get another one and they'd have to cancel it. But we, uh, apparently we grew most of our food. Okay. We butchered animals. We I had great. My my mother was a great gardener, and and uh, we had chickens and we, so uh, we got a few groceries. We take the, they used to take the eggs into the grocery store and exchange them for groceries. Oh, okay. Cases of eggs. Huh. But uh, we we never suffered much apparently uh, as far as the meals went. Yeah. You could take care of yourself with your yep. garden and yep. your animals, yeah. Um, do you remember at all listening to FDR Spireside Chats on the radio? Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you remember about that? Well, I just remember that he was a crippled guy, but yeah. he was uh, very powerful in speaking. And... Uh, it's too bad he didn't last to the end of the war, but he was, uh, he had great friends all over the world. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't remember a lot of other things, but I, I watched him quite a bit, I think. Is it, you kind of hear about how when that came on, everybody gathered around the radio and listened to what was yeah. going on? Yeah. Huh. That's did, what we did. Did you listen to any other radio programs back in those days? Oh, I must have. I must have. Uh, I can't come up with some names right now, sure. but uh, we, there was uh, there were certain programs that we watched. Uh, some singing, some mm -hmm. of the great singers, you know. Yeah. And uh, there wasn't much a golf in those days, but there was later. And uh, so I can't recall uh, what programs we watched, sure. but. There was a lot of good entertainment on the radio. Lots. Back then, yeah. That was the main Saturday part of the nights Saturday nights were great, you know. Huh. Grand Old Opry. Yep. That was one. And uh, there, was, there was comedy programs. Oh, sure. Johnny Carson later, but those guys. Bob Hope. And Bob Hope. Huh. There were a lot of guys that uh, we, we used to listen to. Um, can, where did you say that you went to high school, and what year did you graduate again? I graduated in 1940 at Janesville High School in uh, Waseca County, okay. Minnesota. Do you have any uh, particular fond memories from your high school years? Were you in sports or activities? I, uh, I called on a lot of my classmates to help me in certain things. And, uh, they were smarter than I was, but <laughs> yeah. no, I graduated in four four years, and I was the youngest one in the class then. Oh. You know, so uh, I didn't play sports because I think we had to go back to the farm. You know, at the you had end, work to end, do end of the day. Home. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, what was your first job outside of the farm? Was that the bowling alley that you talked yep, about? Yeah, setting, setting pins in a bowling alley. And oh. They used to have to set them by hand, and that's what I did. How did you like that job? Well, it was it was a good job. It paid, of course, in those days, forty cents an hour was good, you know. Yeah. But uh, it was hard on your hands. You'd get. Uh, oh sure. You'd get a lot of black and brown hands and oh. little sores, but uh, and, uh, it worked fine until uh, I think my dad had to, uh, or anyway, I think I went to St. Paul after that and got a job somewhere. But I worked, uh, I was there during the great armistice blizzard ah. in Waseca, and I remember we closed early. And I walked back to my aunt and uncle's place where I lived, and I was leaning all the while yeah. against that wind. I, whenever I've talked to someone that has that lived through that and remembers that they know exactly where they were and what they were doing. 
my brother was going to school maybe, uh, my oldest brother in uh, Minneapolis, and he couldn't even take a streetcar home. He had to uh, walk uh, many, many blocks in the snow. Yeah. Oh. Do you remember the name of the bowling alley by chance that you worked at? No. Yeah. No, it was owned by, uh, I know the guy uh, that, that uh, I remember the guy that owned it, but whether it was Wasika Bowling, I don't know. Sure. Probably Wasika Lanes or something yeah. like that. And that was a popular activity back then, too, I'm oh. sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what kind of music did you like back then? Any particulars? Well, I always liked Western and uh, some of the modern lady singers, you know, that were so great. Mm -hmm. And uh, but other than that, uh, I probably listened. Uh, I listened to just about everything, but mostly Western, I think. Yeah. What would have been back then, um, Gene Autry and that era? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Gene Autry. That's good stuff. And uh, then the singers were, uh, uh, see right now, at 97, a little bit of your memory leaves you. Yeah. <laughs> Have you watched that program on PBS with Ken Burns? He did about country music. No. He goes through the whole history from way back when it kind of got started and through that era and up till today. If you ever get a chance, it's on one of the public, you know, public Channel 2 or whatever. Okay. They'll show it every once in a while, but it's, I think you would really like that if you like that type of music. They, they really go in depth on the backstories. When I was 29, I bought some golf clubs and I played until about a year and a half, two years ago. Oh. So I played a lot of years. But, yeah. Uh, I wasn't exceptionally good, but I could hold my own. You know, I got a hole in one when I was 87 years old. Really? At Janesville. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, that's really great. Yeah. Well, that's the type of sport that you can, it's a lifetime sport. You oh, can yeah. just keep doing it until you can't, yeah. You're going to let up when you get older as far as distance goes, yeah. but you can still putt, you know. It right? might take more strokes to get it out to the pin, but. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, do you recall um, hearing about what was happening in Europe uh, concerning the Nazis and bombing Brit Great Britain and all that stuff? Well, I, to? I knew about it because I would hear about it, you know. But uh, when before the war, you're yeah, saying. yeah, oh yeah, before oh, yeah. we got involved, yeah. And uh, I knew we'd get involved, and a lot of other people did too. Yeah. But, uh, my brother was taken out of the CCC camp because uh, he was drafted. And uh, I volunteered to go to the service when I was uh, 19, maybe 18, but it was in uh, 42. I went to, the reason I went is I read about, uh, come on to Boston Radio School, Gallup's Island Radio School in Boston Harbor. Go sailing, just have a great time, and learn the the code, the radio code, which three of us went. Oh. We stayed in it in four years. Huh. Um, do you remember when you go to the movie theater? Would they show the in between movies or something? They show stuff about the war, or what no, was I happening? Don't remember News that, reels? But... Not too much. No, not too much. That might have been happening while you were over there. True. Telling people back home. Um, where were you when you found out about Pearl Harbor and how did you feel about that? What was I? I was working, I was probably working in uh, St. Paul at some company, okay. some smaller company. And uh, that's when I heard, I was on a Sunday, you know, and I heard about it over the radio, I guess. Yeah. And it was. Well, Probably was, uh, that was 1941, I'm sure. And I went in in uh, summer, late spring of 42, I went in okay. to the Merchant Marine. Yeah, I heard about it. So what were you, what did you do at that time in between the end of high school and entering this, before entering the service? Well, that's when I, I worked at this bowling alley and I just worked at, uh, 
two or three different companies in St. Paul and Minneapolis. Okay. And, and roomed, uh, roomed with some other guys, you know, in different apartments. But, oh, sure. uh, there was uh, three or four companies before I went into the service. Okay. One, one was a uh, one was a clothing business. Oh. And well, I I think I worked at a Montgomery Ward company. Oh, nice. For a while. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn the, the recording off for now. Okay. I graduated from Gallup's Island Radio School in Boston Harbor. And they had so many radio operators in the Atlantic Coast that they shipped a bunch of us to San Francisco ah. by train. And we went out there. So my first ship came out of San Francisco and went to the South Pacific. Okay. And that was the only time I got seasick, mm. the first trip. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Now, so um, going back a little bit, when did you uh, end up enlisting or were you drafted? No, I, I volunteered. You I volunteered. enlisted. Yeah. I enlisted. Did you, any of your friends go in with you or did you go yeah, in? Yeah, there was a couple other guys from Minneapolis area. Yeah. Uh, I can hardly remember their names. We, we, we decided all to go and have that great time in Boston, you know. <laughs> yeah. So we learned the radio, we learned the Morse code. Huh. And then when we got out, of course, it was only about six, seven months school, you know. Oh, sure. And Boston Harbor is cold in the winter. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> did you choose your specific branch of the military? Did you have a choice of what you wanted to go into, or no? This was it. Once you got into the school and learned the code, you were in. The, you you automatically went through the the Coast Guard. Okay. Because I got a I got an initial slip here from the Coast Guard in in, in January or whatever it was, but that's how we got into the military. Okay. But uh, Truman and some of the others just forgot about us. You know. We were still considered civilians, see, because there were younger people that couldn't get in the yeah. army in the in the merchant marine. Oh sure. Um, all right. Uh, uh, do you remember what it was like going into the um, into the office to sign up the first time to enlist? No, I hardly <laughs> remember that. But it, going, I, yeah. I don't think I was. Uh, Concerned about it. I don't think I was concerned about it. And then they said, You're going to San Francisco to ship out. Huh. I either shipped out in San Francisco or New York, even Stephen. Yeah. Over the four years, three years. Huh. Half the time it was out of Frisco, and the other half of it was in New York. So the ship would come back. One trip. I forget what trip, it was the third trip or something. I left I left Los Angeles or or Frisco, one or the other. Went all the way to Calcutta, India oh. on a single ship now, and then continued on to New York, and then I came home for a, a break, so I was around the world oh, wow. in one ship. Huh. Nice. I got a souvenir over there from Calcutta that I brought. Oh, okay. A little, little, uh, that little wooden one. That little carving. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, was it was it um, difficult leaving the folks and the family, or was it kind of a? It was kind of an. It, was no, it. it was kind of a. I'd already been gone, you know, with oh, some jobs, sure. but uh, it, we just looked forward to it. Yeah. We looked forward to it. It sounds like when the guys I've talked to, there was just so much patriotism. Every, everybody was going to sign up and going. Well, my somewhere. brother, that was farming, tried to get in. They wouldn't let him get in because he was a farmer. Ah, uh, he had to stay <laughs> home and help at the farm. Yeah. Ah. Uh, <coughs> yeah, that's that happened too. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. What was a what was it like a typical day during your basic training? That would be in school, you mean? Yeah, like when you first were getting your training and what was a oh. typical day like? 
Well, I don't know. We uh, we did a little sailing, and we'd go into Boston by ship, by a little ship, and uh, it, uh, it it was uh, studying quite a bit, you know, and practicing sure. with this sender. But other than that, uh, it, it, I don't remember anything bad about it. You did know. you have to go through the typical boot camp, physical fitness no. type stuff? It was just it was the training right off the bat. Right, right. Yeah. I imagine we passed a physical of some kind. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you have any kind of, uh, were you trained with any type of weaponry or sidearms or anything like that? Uh, no, we really weren't. We, uh, we did some marching. Okay. In the in the camp in the Gallup's Island camp, but uh, other than that, we didn't have to have any uh, military weapons at any time. Okay. As civilians, you see. And did you um, do you remember any of the specific uh, soldiers that you trained with at that time and stayed close with them, or was it more? throughout the war that you met guys and I don't remember anybody from that school really that yeah. right now yeah. and that's not, but that's just because of a memory yeah right and did you keep in touch with any of the guys that you were with during the war after for a while or oh yeah oh yeah uh, other radio operators and uh, we had some wonderful captains of course I had eight different captains you know and I used to, I got even pictures now of a, a first mate, and uh, I always had an assistant or two as a radio operator. Okay. I was chief radio operator, but I had one or two assistants, so we'd go ashore together. And uh, one first mate was very we, we went, we went to every restaurant we could in one night and had lobster in New <laughs> York on a break, you know, in between ships. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good memory. Oh yeah. All right. Um, well, the next question was that what did you do for recreation in your free time? It sounds like you went out and found some places to eat and oh yeah, seafood oh, yeah. and oh yeah. We came home in between trips quite often. Not always, but you could come home for a week or so. And then you had to get back and sign up and when you for were, the next ship. See. Okay. When you were home, did, did that mean you went back to your parents' place? Yeah, we always went to Janesville, Minnesota, with okay. my parents. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm sure they appreciated that. Oh, yeah, they were happy about it. Because I was the only one of us that could do that. Oh, okay. Um, do you remember um, any of the sacrifices during, you know, like the uh, rationing and buying bonds and recycling stuff? And no, no, I didn't think I noticed much about that. That might have been while you were out on the ships, too. I back think home. so, I think so. Rationing and yeah, I think that took place when I was on ships, yeah. Okay. Um, I knew about, uh, yes, I knew about the rationing and I knew about all the women building ships. Okay. Thousands of them were working in building ships. <clears throat> Did you have uh, any relatives that were involved with that part of it? Building ships and whatnot, no, aunts or no, anything? No. Not that I know of. So what happened, uh, so you got trained and then what happened between your end of your training and when you were first shipped overseas? Well, as soon as they ended training, I was given this uniform, or issued anyway, issued a ensign, and immediately shipped out to California. Okay. But uh, I probably sailed uh, within two weeks or less from the time I graduated. Oh. You know, it was they needed operators, and so I uh, I didn't have any spare time in there. They just shipped me right out. I remember riding through Chicago and on the train. Yeah. You know, everybody treated you pretty good because you had some in instance of, of of a military. You know. Sure. Did you have your uniform on, and so people probably were... uh, probably a cap or something. Yeah, we did. People knew you were going off to war, so they yep. 
did they greet you in the towns and have the band out and all that kind of stuff? Well, they didn't have the band out, but they, uh, just like uh, what happened to me uh, two weeks ago, I'm at a meat market in town. Yeah. I'm buying a couple of uh, salads. The, the guy said it's already paid for it. There was a guy standing at the counter, a younger guy. Uh -huh. He paid for it. Nice. But that's happened to me many times with nice this pose. cap on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. We were at a fancy restaurant in Otana, my son and I together, and somebody picked up the bill, huh. you know, one day. And they're doing it here every once in a yeah. while. Yeah. They like to do that in Monticello. Do you feel uh, appreciated that way? Oh, yeah. It's that's how you get appreciated. Uh, yeah. It's a wonderful feeling. Yeah, know. I bet. All right. All right. So now we're going to talk about your during the wartime service. Um, what theater of operations were you in? I was in three different theater of operations: Atlantic, Pacific, and Mediterranean. Huh. And uh, oh, excuse me. I think I was also in the Indian Ocean one. So they, uh, that might have been a different, different uh, category. Okay. So you said you, you first were shipped out of uh, San Francisco, and they sent you to the South Pacific? Numia. Oh. Numia, New Caledonia, a little bit of an island, oh. way down uh, north of Australia or northeast of Australia. But that was my first trip, and then I came back. But then I've... Uh, I shipped one time to New Zealand, and I, I also went all the way to Calcutta. Huh. And then once we left Calcutta, we shipped right on back to New York, you know. And then one, the last trip I made, uh, one of the last trips was from New York to uh, Belgium huh. at the Battle of the Bulge. I was in Antwerp, Belgium, oh. and it was dangerous because our ship was loaded with it high test gas when we went in. Oh. We, they'd been bombing that town. Yeah. And then twice I went to Murmansk, Russia, which is uh, north of Norway. Little town. Yeah. All the workers were women. All the people unloading the ship and everything were women. Oh. Dressed in men's clothing. Huh. You know. Yeah. And another trip I went through the Medit I went through the Mediterranean coming home then we can see your face, or you can set it down there. There, there you go. Um, I went through the Mediterranean uh, on the way home from the work, the trip around the world, but I went back through the Mediterranean, through the canal, and went to Abadan, Iran at that time. Yeah. Iraq's here and Iran's here. Yeah. So I, I, I went to, that's where we unloaded, because that was going to Russia. It went through Persia, the, the goods we took over yeah. went to Russia, see. So what was the main uh, scope of the merchant marine? What did they do? What was their Well, they're, they're still doing it. Yeah. They're delivering material, but this was war material we delivered, yeah. you see. Thousands of ships. Huh. They lost sometimes as high as 30, 40 in a day on that Murmansk trip up north there. The awesome. submarines would get them. Hmm. We'd go on convoys, that means 20, 30 ships, hmm. but they'd pick them off on the edge, you know. Huh. And uh, they're, they're still doing it today, delivering stuff to uh, other countries. Okay. You know. And so you were delivering war uh, supplies to the fighting forces and right. whatever, wherever you were going. Did you have any close calls when you were on the convoys? Well, the only one I had was in the Mediterranean. The one morning we we were warned about an aircraft above. So there was a lot of shooting. Of, we had some 20 millimeter guns on ships, oh. but their bullets would be red and yellow, you know. Oh. And that went on for a long, that was the only close call I had in all those trips, huh. you know. But the, uh, the, uh, I had a classmate didn't get out of New York three different times on ships. He was he was torpedoed right out of the war, the three mile zone. Oh. He finally made it, but the, yeah, he, he got 
he got saved, you know, but he yeah. got torpedoed and abandoned ship. <laughs> wow. And uh, other than that, uh, we we never had any any difficulties uh, with other with other. Well, there were certain war zones which I got a bonus for several of them. When we were in that war zone, so many days we'd get a bonus. Okay. You know? <clears throat> what was what was the typical day like for you on the ship when you were delivering stuff? Actually, uh, playing cards. <laughs> I, I when I first got on the ship, I started reading the Bible and I read a lot of it. Okay. I never finished it, of course, but yeah. every night I was reading the Bible when I first went in, because, see, I was 19 years old or so. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we would just kill time uh, either sunbathing, and uh, of course we crossed the equator and we had a, we had a uh, doings going on. When you cross the equator, somebody's going to yeah. cut your hair and and do a few other things to you. Okay. So that happened to me on the first trip, you see. Uh, anyway, uh, I'd even play cards with the captain once in a while, you yeah. know, and uh, we just, and then we ate well. Merchant Marine ate well because they had a cook on every ship that, and the food was brought in ahead of time, you know. Okay. When we shipped out. Did you go into a, did you have like a cafeteria on the ship? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, we had a dining room, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so that's where we'd meet and uh, we'd do exercises and we'd, we'd do different things, but yeah, keep active. when you're young like that, you're, you don't have to do too many things. Yeah. What were some of your favorite foods that you ate on the ship? Just about anything you can name, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Steaks, uh, bre great breakfast, you know, huh. and uh, meatloafs and uh, turkey and chicken and everything. We we always were pretty well supplied, and sometimes we helped other people when we got into a port. We had extra food; we could okay. give, give them some. You know? Sure. But there again, I I don't remember any particular meal. Yeah. <clears throat> but we celebrated the holidays just like we do even now. You had turkeys and potatoes and the yeah. whole. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, that's pretty. That worked out pretty good. Pretty different than uh, the right. frozen frozen meals that the army was. Yeah. Or the. Uh, the K rations. Sea rations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quite a bit different. Yeah. Um, so when you did your radio work, did you do more of that when you were closer to the? Closer Target? to yeah, Port. we didn't have to send very much because they didn't want you to send very much. Yeah, the enemy could pick it up. Okay, but we our ship got misguided on the way in from uh, England or somewhere. The storm was so bad out of New York <coughs> that we didn't even go to New York. We ended up in Baltimore. And that's when I had to get a hold of a pilot to get us to come in. Okay. So there was a few times that I transmitted, but most of the time it was receiving messages. Okay. And reporting it to the captain yeah, or whoever. Yeah, right, right. Did you ever um, intercept any messages or anything like that? Or? No, no, I never, I never you did. Were, that wasn't your task or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Never was uh, never heard anything that was derogatory or uh, enemy messages. Yeah. Huh. Um, how do you remember how long it would take to like when you left San Francisco to your place in the South Pacific? How long of a ride was that? Well, it was probably in that case that was about uh, three weeks or four. Okay. One way, and we'd stay there a couple of weeks, and we'd come back. The trip around the world took six months, mm. really. And even after the war was over, I made a trip from uh, East Coast, New York, through the Panama Canal, all the way to the Philippines. Mm. Now that was a trip. Yeah. And we ended up in the Philippines through the holidays of 1945. Huh? And we didn't get discharged till early, uh, about February 46, and I got 
I got, I sent from the Philippines, they sent us up to Shanghai, China, hmm. where we left the ship there, see, they gave them the ship. So we, we got rid of everything we could. Well, the captain made a lot of money that time, selling well, lumber and everything. But anyway, then we came home on a different ship as a passenger. Oh. But uh, then got discharged. Okay. But that was, uh, some trips were, most trips were at least a month and a half or two months, you know, okay. most trips. So you were, you were coming and going constantly. Oh, yeah. Back and forth and back. Yeah. Different directions. Yep. Yeah. Did you, when you were, when you got to your port, did you have time off usually to explore? I was off all the while I was there. Okay. I could go ashore, you know, and do whatever. Do whatever, yeah. Get a date with a girl, or, or go to a movie, or it, when I was in Calcutta, I played the horse races on Saturday. Uh -huh. Ha! At my young age, yeah, they had turf races. I think I had two weeks in a row. I, I won a little money, and the third Saturday we left, uh -huh. ship left. But no, we we could. Uh, we could go eat, you know, out at restaurants and yeah. stuff like that. So it was, uh, that was one thing about the radio. You know, we were all called Sparks, every radio operator. Oh. I was doing my Sparks on every trip. Huh. Not Marvin. Huh. <laughs> they, they just called you Sparks. Well, were you the only radio operator or was there a team no, of I, you? No, there was, there was sometimes three of us. Okay. Two or three. Very seldom I was alone. Yeah. You know, they, I was chief radio operator, but then there would be two others, one or two others. Okay. So we got to be good friends, you know. And yeah. We took shifts. <coughs> Excuse me. We took different shifts. Sure. So then when you, were the, were the locals always pretty friendly, uh, oh, welcoming yeah. to you guys? <coughs> Excuse me, darn it. Anyway, when I was in Abadan, Iran, we did go to Iraq on a little bus trip. Okay. Three or four of us. We did sightseeing. Yeah. And uh, saw a lot of the young kids there that were didn't have parents, you know. Yeah. And uh, we'd give them candy and stuff. Oh, sure. Did you... Uh pick up any souvenirs and stuff when you're in the different towns to bring back home? Well, I'd try to bring something from every town, but it might be just a handkerchief or something. But yeah. I, I, I got a picture of me in kilts when I was in Scotland uh. and uh, signed by a girl that I had dated. But I was, I was in kilts and I tried to find that the other day. I've got it here somewhere. Oh. And uh, uh, what else? I pick up something uh, every place I was, you know. Sure. Have you got that little statue thing that we were... Oh, there you go. There we can... You want to tell us about that? Well, I don't know much about it except that I bought it. Yeah. You know. Where, where did you get that? Shanghai. Yeah. No, no, but Calcutta, India. Calcutta. Calcutta, okay. India. So I just remembered that's where it came. It from. looks like some sort of warrior. Or yeah, something. it's a warrior on a on a on a, a tiger. Or? No, I think that's. I think that's probably no. That doesn't look like a uh, a uh, animal. I was thinking it was. Yeah, it looks like a, it looks like some type of a tiger. When you. Hung on to that for a long time. Oh yeah. Here it is in your living room still to, today. I probably uh, I probably got some other stuff saved in a file somewhere sure. from different different areas. But, huh. uh, I don't know what I got from Russia when I was in northern Russia. Uh, we went to a we went to a uh, dance one time when I was in northern Russia and uh, the girls uh, they kind of smelled. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because they didn't have the sanitary conditions that we do. Okay. And uh, but we we went to a dance, and uh, that that's one thing I remember. Otherwise, you, you stick stayed close to the ship in some ports because there was nothing to see. Sure. You know. 
just play cards and read the Bible yep. and whatever? Yeah, well, we played a lot of cards. Uh, there was a card game going in in that, in that kitchen area, in that dining room, and I remember one third mate. He was a third mate, and he played with the crew. Huh. And he was making money hand over foot he'd send home because <laughs> he'd beat them there. Yeah. They'd play a lot of poker, yeah. mostly sure. poker. You know. A lot of coffee. Oh, yeah. Brewing. Say, and... do you want a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Because I got some fresh coffee. No, thanks. Um, do you remember what, did you have a favorite uh, port that you went to that you really enjoyed? Well, I think I went to two ports in New Zealand. Oh. Christchurch and, uh, uh, what the heck, yeah. Christchurch and, uh, see, now I can't come up. Auck Auckland is the oh. capital. But there were two different islands, and that reminded me a lot of Scotland, too, because it's green, and they have horses and sheep, and uh, it was just a nice place to oh. be, New Zealand. Um, I was in Glasgow, Scotland, as, a, as just just for a little while, as the ship stopped there, and uh, then, uh, other than that, uh, I never, never forget uh, the canal on top of the Suez Canal. You know. Okay. Never forget. It was three times I was there. Huh. But I met a, I met a classmate there actually from another ship, and he was a classmate that came home to Minnesota from Boston with me once, and by golly, we got together huh. for a, a little while. He was from Minnesota, also a high school classmate or a. No, oh, he was. He was from. He was from Boston. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where I, I went to school, like radio school. Yeah. Je Harry Krim. Ah. And by golly, we, we connected by radio, by, by phone, you know, and found out the ships were both on the port. And so, huh. so he came over to my ship and he said, my ship's loaded with beer. Ah. <laughs> it was, I guess. That's what they were delivering, huh? Yeah, beer delivery. I suppose. I never heard of that. Chocolate before. and beer and cigarettes. Sure. And... Yeah. Oh, we, we had a locomotive on one. Uh, the locomotive was sitting on our deck because you couldn't oh. load it any other way. But yeah. I think we took it to southern Russia. The narrow band read, uh, locomotive. Okay. It is a little, there's one a little narrower. Yeah. But yeah, we took, we took, one time we took about six big high priced officers in our ship. We had even cabinets for them, cabins for them on the deck. For those officers, I forget where we took them, but we had, they were lieutenants and okay. lieutenant Ken, different army, mostly army. Yeah. So we had everything. We we had, of course, we had a lot of jeeps and oh. stuff uh, on in, on the ship and just little. I can't even tell you what we all we had everything. Do you remember? Was there one that was? Peculiar or most interesting to you? Well, I think that was the one the with, the, with the train on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't pay much attention. You yeah, know what I mean, You're it's so common. We did. Yeah. Did you ever get to meet any um, people that are now famous from the war that you can remember? No. Generals or any of that? Those guys. No, I never met any of those. I okay. never met, I never met uh, Churchill, and I never met uh, uh, any of those uh, great leaders that used to get together with Franklin. Yeah. Dewey, you know. No, I don't remember. Well, they I sometimes remember. get together on the boats and ships to, to yeah. talk or whatever. We see movies, by the way, when we were in the port of the Philippines. Uh, this one ship would always have movies, so we got to. We'd go from our ship to that ship to watch a movie. Okay. That was pretty common huh. in port, in, in port to go to a movie on another ship, you know. Sure. Because there were just a few ships that did it. Oh. Then you get to meet some other guys. And, oh, yes. Yeah. Um, do you remember any of your... Uh, your commanding officers from your ships and stuff? Oh, I, when I see their names, I remember yeah. every one of them. Yeah, and you look at the paperwork and yeah, stuff. Yeah, just, and, and uh, I remember most of the names of the ships, too. Were they pretty good guys for the most part? Oh, yes, they were great guys. Yeah. Great guys. 
Yeah. Nice. They did such a marvelous job. See, we had a Navy crew on every merchant ship that I sailed on. There was a Navy crew running the guns. Oh, okay. The, the whole Navy crew was, the guns were run by Navy young fellas. Oh, sure. But they always had a lieutenant or a commander. There always was one leader of a yeah. Navy on the ship. Okay. And there was a purser, of course, that would write you the check. Uh. There was always a purser, but boy, that when we went through the Panama Canal, the ship stopped in the middle. There's a lake in the middle of that canal, a freshwater lake. Oh. So they stopped the ship, and everybody went swimming. Oh, yeah. For a while before we continued. Nice. Yeah, but uh, oh, Chittenden and. Uh, once I see their name again, of course, I remember quite, I even, I said I played cards with one or two of them. Yeah. You know, play cribbage or something. Okay, know. sure. Oh, they were great guys. They never reprimanded you or did anything like that. Sure. They let you do your job. Yeah, nice. I have a, nep or a nephew that was in the Navy on the uh, nuclear uh, aircraft carrier number 77, CVN, and he, I remember him talking about they'd, they'd get out to a certain part when they were, when they were deployed, they'd stop the boat and the ship and jump off the edge. <laughs> Whoever sure. wanted to could jump, it's a pretty big drop I would imagine, jump off, but he was, that reminded me because he, one of his, he was with ordnance, and so one of his jobs when they came into port and stuff was manning the 50 millimeter guns on the sides of the of the ship and sure. stuff, so that reminded me of him. Um, did you uh, come close to, what were some of the uh, battle zones that you, were, were you in them or very close to them? Or? Well, when we were, when we were in uh, Calcutta, there we, it was right north of there would be the battle zone. When we were in Antwerp, Jeff, Belgium, the battle zone was a battle of the bulge coming into that town, uh. <coughs> and uh, so that was. I wouldn't. They wouldn't even let me go see my brother. Usually I could go somewhere, but they wouldn't let me. And he was, he was at the battle of the bulge, and I was in the town of Antwerp, but they wouldn't let me go uh. travel. See that to that. So in that case, you you were on the ship to there, but then you went off and you delivered the the goods. Into the town? Oh yeah, they unloaded it as fast as they could. Then the way we go again. <laughs> is that a port town or? Oh yeah, in, Antwerp, also is in a ways. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember that for sure. Antwerp, Belgium. But you and, were uh, there during the Battle of the Bulge. Yep. Yep. Did you? So it wasn't too long after that the war was over. Yeah. See. You were pretty aware of what was going on at the, imagine, in we, town. And even. then we left. We left Antwerp and headed back to England. Which is the channel, English Channel. Yeah. And our prop hit a cable or something. Oh. So we got laid up in Plymouth, England for a month. Oh. So we were there as, as customers and guests for a whole month. We oh. were in Plymouth, England while they fixed that ship, which came back to New York. What you know? was that experience like? A month in England? Well, we took time to go to London. Yeah. We took a bus to London, four of us, I think four of us. We had a bottle of whiskey with us at the mm -hmm. time on the, on the bus. <laughs> and I remember then we'd buy these cigars this long. Oh. <laughs> and that's all I ever saw of London. What were your, did you accommodate off the ship or did you sleep on the ship at night and then go into town or? Well, no, in those cases we... Uh, uh, For a whole month you... Oh, we stayed on the ship always. So yeah, then you'd oh, go yeah, into town. Yeah, they, they yeah didn't we didn't you... stay at motels. Uh, okay. Motels. We stayed on the ship. That was our bed. I heard in some cases, at least for the foot soldiers, they would come into a town and and live in people's houses that had been oh, evacuated. Yeah. <laughs> but not in England, probably. They wouldn't have done that. But Huh. Um, let's see. So there's a lot of it. Oh, I was going to ask you, did you ever experience the um, the entertainment, you know, the Bob Hope type of, when they bring people in like a, a female movie star and, a, and Bob Hope or something? 
I'm trying to think of the name of that. I forget what it was called. But they bring entertainers in. Oh, I saw a lot of them. Did you? I saw a lot of them. And then, and they, you mean when overseas? Yeah. I didn't see them overseas, but I, uh, I even see them today. About how many times they they went into different countries? Yeah. You know? And they'd have these movie stars, gals, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the guy with the mustache, what was his name? <laughs> Uh, Clark Gable, or no? This he was the funny guy. He was the oh Bob Hope's uh, kind of sidekick. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I I I've watched a lot of them, but yeah. I, I didn't see any in person, no. Well, you were because they weren't there when I was there. Sure, you hear a lot about those. Oh, he did. He did so many of them, and. The most loved guy in the world. The morale, keep the morale up. Oh, the, he was the most loved guy. He had the right people, and they, they clapped him to death. You know. Huh. So you were, you didn't see it while you were actually there, but you, you knew about it, and you oh, saw I it on TV it. and whatever. Yeah, I knew about it. Yeah. Because we we kept up pretty well on the news, you know, on, uh, in our cabin even. Did you? Um, <clears throat> Were you much of a letter writer? Did you write home a lot or keep yes. a journal or anything? Yes, yeah. I wrote a lot of letters to my mother and my, my brothers and uh, sister. Oh, you know, yeah. I did a lot of We did had time for that, you yeah. know, so we did a lot of that. I think I wrote home constantly, you mm -hmm. know, my mother and dad. But I, I wrote to my brothers even when he was in the Army and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, Eugene was in the, he was on the Midway, U.S. Midway, which never was really in the war. They were on a shakedown cruise after, at the end of the war. See, that was a, they couldn't go through the canal because there were two lines of a ship. Hmm. The, 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 yeah. uh, it's now sitting in a harbor in San Diego. Yeah. So, uh, uh, he, uh, anyway, uh, He got in. He got in on the college that I didn't get in on, and he was only in the last part of the war. Uh -huh. And he got. He went through Gustavus. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So okay. then he uh, was working in Mankato most of his life. Um. So did it take a while for the mail back and forth to catch up to you? Oh yeah. Yeah. It it took. Sometimes a week, two weeks. Yeah. Sure. It was always nice to get mail, I suppose. Oh, yeah. We had mail call every day. You oh. know. Everybody's waiting to hear their name called out. <laughs> yep. So I was always glad to hear. I, I think I got a stack of those letters and stuff uh, saved. I was just going to ask you if anybody saved the letters that you, either that you wrote that, or that you That, that I received. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I got a stack of them somewhere. You know. Do you know if anybody in the family has the ones that you wrote home? No, I don't know that. Of course, they're all gone. That'd be in, yeah. Except the my the grandkids uh, have them in a the box somewhere or something. Some of the grandchildren might. Uh, other than that, I don't think my daughter or my son. My, my daughter and my son might have something like that. Yeah. Uh, the grandchildren. Uh, this grandchild, the two grandchildren I have are teachers, and. Mm -hmm. They, they, this one in town here. She brought all my. She brings all my groceries to me. Uh, now I'm starting to go into the store myself. But okay. <coughs> she's been for about months and months. She's been bringing me all my groceries. She gets them all with this thing. Oh sure. And they deliver them right to her trunk, and she brings them. That's what we do too. Walmart, you just pull up and, and bring it out. This is Walmart that yeah. they, uh, I like to go. That's pretty slick, yeah. Um, they don't wash their carts nearly as well as uh, Target does. Yeah. Target really goes over those carts. Yeah. Um, let's see what else about your anything else you want to talk about as far as your the different ports that you went to or people that you met. Well, I was trying to think of. Uh, Trying to think of some of the ports, and as far as meeting people, I don't remember them because yeah. they were there a short time. Yeah. You know? But uh, 
that Russian trip, uh, I was lucky to get through that. Twice, especially, because a lot of people never made it once. Because of the tor uh, Torpedo torpedoing? Torpedoing. Huh. Oh, they lost. We, we now lead every single military organization. We've lost more deaths, more people, than any of the military. Huh. The Marines are next to us Yeah. Huh. during that war. Wow. So we lost a lot of people, but uh, they were all ages, you know. Yeah. Because engineers, all ages. When one ship goes down, just think of all the merchandise goes down. Yeah. Plus the crew. Yeah. What was that route from, like, where would you... North Atlantic would go uh, right up alongside Scotland. Okay. And then uh, above Norway, and just above Norway is the Burmask, Russia. Just, just close to the border of Norway. Maybe just to, just to be sure, can you tell me about that route to up to Russia again? Well, we go, we leave New York usually or some port on the East Coast, and we head, we head for uh, Scotland, on the west shore of Scotland. We go up along the coast, and then go up above Norway and Sweden, and come back into Murmansk, Russia. Okay. A little town, but uh, that's that was the northern entrance to all the goods, and the other ones came through different countries even to Russia. Huh. Was that pretty nerve-wracking once you started getting closer, knowing oh, oh, how yeah, it was? Oh yeah, you 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 wondered when you were going to get it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any opportunities to see um, uh, aerial combat between you know the uh, dog fights and stuff when you were sailing? Did you see any no. action like that or bombers going over? No. Or? No. No. Okay. No, we we just did in that one case when when they were doing it to us. I don't even yeah. know how high the sh the airplane was, or but they spotted an airplane, and then we started uh, shooting everything we had at it. Oh you know? sure. So we didn't get hit. When you were out and about, did you ever hear the the radio stories from Tokyo Rose or Oh yeah, Texas Sally. Oh yeah, we heard, that like? we heard Turkey Rose quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. What What do you remember about that? Well, she was very pleasant, you know, telling about how wonderful things were going to be and were, and <laughs> <laughs> lying to her teeth. Yeah, <laughs> Tokyo Rose. Huh. Yeah, we seem to know a little too much information, I suppose, too, huh? Yeah. Huh. She just had no worries in the world, and she. Uh, she did not like what was going on with the uh, Allies. Sure. Um, Tokyo Rolls. Now, when you were in some of the ports, did you see, like especially in Belgium, did you see uh, bombed out buildings and some of the effect of that? St well, that's what we saw in Antwerp. Yeah. They had a great big, uh, let's say, railroad station. It was, the roof was in. Huh. It was bombed, and uh, well, they had what they called a uh, V, a V-shaped a v uh, bomb come down. Yeah, uh, and that, and that we saw holes in the in the tree street sure. where they did, but they had the buzz bomb. Remember hearing about yeah. that? We even ran away from a buzz bomb. You could run away from it if you wanted, if you could just go the opposite direction. The buzz bomb would be about twenty foot high in the off the off the uh, soil, and, and you could hear it. You could hear it coming. You could hear it coming, but we we weren't worried about that. We were worried about that V bomb. Because they came out of nowhere, I suppose. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, they'd hit the ships. You know. Could you hear them at all, or did they have not the V bombs? No, until huh. until they hit. I don't think you could hear huh. them. Yeah, that was quite a weapon that they had. Those rockets. Yeah, um, but you didn't. You didn't have to. It, once in a while, uh, the uh, buzz bomb. I think it kind of end and drop by itself. Oh sure. So many miles. Here's the, what I was thinking of before with Bob Hope. I couldn't remember the name. It was called the USO Show. I was trying to think of that name. I couldn't come up with it. Um, uh, 
what what was it uh, what was it like towards the end of the war? Uh, when did you know that you were heading home or whatever? Well, I knew I would be coming home uh, when I when I was in New York or New Jersey, one or the other, with the end of the of the war, end of the in forty August forty five or whenever it was. Yeah. I knew I'd be coming home, but I went on another trip after that. Sure. So they had it lined up already to go all the way to the Philippines. See? Okay. But uh, oh no, we knew we'd be coming home then, because the war they had quit bombing. Everybody had quit bombing, you know. So that was uh, I was I hap I happened to be in Scotland at the time of the first the first. Uh, end of the war, okay. the, let's say the European end, yeah. Europe end, but then I was in, uh, I was in, maybe I was in with my brother, youngest brother, I think I was, uh, he was, he was uh, in the Navy on the East Coast anyway when the Japs finished. Okay. You know, so we, uh, a lot of us never got to our barracks, we drank so much. I was just going to ask you, was there a lot of celebrating for oh, that victory in Europe? Oh, yeah. Just like you can't believe, I suppose. Yeah. It, it, we, were on a, we were at a beach or so where, the, where their planes were located, and uh, there's a lot of people left on the beach <laughs> <laughs> that night. So they didn't make it back. They didn't to make the, it back. They just slept on the beach all I night. I remember laying on the beach looking up and yeah? so happy. Looking up at the stars. The war was over. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so then, uh, oh, this question always came up when I did the my history series too. Is what you're uh, talking about the end of the war in in the Pacific? Your thoughts about the um, use of the atomic bomb? Did you feel that was a good thing or? Well, the more I think about it, that was the best thing to do. Yeah. The more I think about it, uh, maybe at the time I don't remember what yeah. I thought, but I, if that wouldn't have happened, we'd still be fighting probably. But no, that was a great decision. All of the veterans I've talked to from World War II have the same answer. I thought there would have been so many more oh. deaths if we had to invade mainland oh, Japan. Yeah. You know, and I hope million. we don't have to use it again. But if yeah. we ever got into a war, we would. Yeah, now that they have it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you returned home. What was your? So you went after the war. You went to the Philippines, and then you were came done? home. Came home uh, to uh, San Francisco, and then came home uh, by uh, bus or train, whatever. Plane by plane. I I traveled a lot by plane. Okay. Because I could afford it, see. And sure. In those days, it wasn't that expensive. Yeah. And then uh, I think I went to Janesville, but I didn't stay home very long because I hadn't been home much since I had that first job at Bowling Alley. I hadn't been home much, just to oh, visit. Okay. Just to visit. So I've been on my own since I was 16. Huh. You know. Anyway, uh, I stayed home a little while, and then I came up to Minneapolis and got a job. Okay. And uh, stayed at different. See that that was that was twenty. That was twenty uh, six. Yeah, twenty six. I got home in the spring of twenty six, and uh, I worked in Minneapolis, uh, in two or three different firms. Oh, well, then I uh, no, then I went to. Uh, I decided to go to uh, a radio school in Chicago. Okay. So another guy and I from Janesville went to radio school. Mm. And uh, that was refrigeration was new at the time and uh, radio and uh, television was brand new. But uh, that was 46, 40, uh, it was probably 47. Okay. 48 I got married in uh, okay. February. Okay. So when you got back to the states, how were you received by the general public? When the, after well, pretty the war darn was over? good. Pretty, pretty good. darn good. Yeah. Treated pretty, pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Treated well. Because you were a veteran, and uh, 
that was a long war, you know, so you were treated quite good everywhere you went. Yeah, and then you, um, you said you went to Chicago to train some more in radio? Radio school, yeah, yeah. well it was, uh, it was a, uh, called a radio school, but it was teaching of uh, various things, but uh, I got a, I thought I had a copy of the book. It was, we studied, we studied a lot of refrigeration okay. because it was brand new. Sure. And when I got back out of there, I took a job with a radio company in Minneapolis, but I was out servicing radios. Oh, okay. On a call. Sure. On a call. For a while. And uh, that was on Lake Street in Minneapolis. Oh. But then I took a couple other jobs. Uh, oh, I, I was working for H.C. Strom Company. Uh, I forgot when I started, but I was there for a number of years and I got married while I was there. And that was, uh, that was the beginning of uh, tape and, and, I, and wire, oh, okay. you know, uh -huh. uh, machines. Yeah. So I stayed in that all my life. Huh. <clears throat> I stayed in that for many years. I was, I was still delivering tape machines in St. Peter just a few years ago. Huh. Nice. <laughs> they would call me when they needed something. Sure. You know. Well, so tell us about when you uh, met your wife and when you got married and all that kind of stuff. Well, I, uh, I, I don't know how long it was uh, after I got home, but we had a place called Hardeaker's on a lake down there that had a great dance hall, very okay. famous dance hall okay. in the community. Sure. They come from miles around. Back home? Yep. And uh, so I went to Hardy Girls with my, I guess I bought a, I had a car. I bought my first car uh, in Waseca huh? in the spring or late spring of, of 46. Okay. 46. Anyway, I think I had a load of, car, a load of people with me. We went to that dance and I saw a girl dancing. She was very good at the jitterbug and mm. long hair. And uh, so I took an interest to her just by seeing her dance. Mm. So I danced with her <coughs> and found out she lived in Minneapolis where I lived. Oh. So from then on, we uh, started dating, you know. Nice. And I, well, she was. She was from uh, Nicollet County. Okay. Nicollet, down by Mankato, you know, yeah. St. Peter. <coughs> so I'd bring her up. I'd bring her home. I'd take my brother and we'd go home, but on the way home, we'd take her home. Okay. We'd drop her off. Sure. And then we'd go to Janesville and then we'd pick her back up. Oh. So, uh, so anyway, uh, we dated uh, quite a while. And then we got married in 48, so it was a, over a year and a half or something. And uh, got married in Nicollet County, no, at Nicollet, at the Catholic Church uh, in 48. Okay. To February 10th. We stayed married 65 years wow. before she died. Yeah. And uh, we lived. Uh, we lived in Minneapolis. We lived in Brooklyn Center 30 years. We lived in uh, Fridley the first four years or five. The second place we went was Robbinsdale. We were there six years. Oh. Then we went to Brooklyn Center and we were there 30 years before we, uh, <coughs> we, had, <coughs> we had bought a cabin on a lake in Wisconsin near uh, Amory, in Am near Amory. So we, we went out there for four years and built a new uh, cabin cabin home. Oh, sure. Which was easy to sell because everybody on the lake had sewer, with big lake, Wampagas. Oh, okay. So we sold that and uh, went to Waseca where my brother was, this, this, this uh, one that was used to farm. So he, he got us a place there, and we stayed there. Uh, but we were in that place 26 years, I oh. think. 
before she died. Then I went to an apartment. Sure. In Waseca, and from there up here. Oh, okay. So uh, we had, uh, but it's funny how we. Uh, I was a re I was a Lutheran all my life, and she oh. was a Catholic all her life. Okay. And we never had any serious problems. Good. Both went to church. Yeah, that's good. I'd go to her doings, and she'd go to mine. Oh, sure. That works. Yeah, it worked. Do you happen to remember talking back about your car that you bought when you were out of the service? Do you remember what it was? Yeah. 1941 DeSoto. Oh, nice. And that was a pre-war car, so it was had metal in it. Yeah. And it was a four-door. It was a big one. It was a big one. Yeah. And it... It hadn't been used very little during the war, you see. Oh, sure. So here I got that car in, in Waseca, and I had it I had it a long time. But it was, it was a good running car. Nice. It was a six cylinder, uh, four door, black, uh, pretty nice car. Nice. I, bought a, I bought a brand new DeSoto a few years, quite a few years later. Yeah. Because I liked that one. Oh, moment. sure. But then I. I've had, all my life, I've probably had 25 cars. Oh, sure. And the one I got now is as good a car as I've ever had. It's a 19, uh, it's a 19, uh, 90, uh, 96. No, it wouldn't be that, it wouldn't, uh, 06. It's okay. an 06. Uh, Grand Marquis Mercury, okay. which they don't build. Yeah. But I bought it from my brother. They bought it in Florida, oh. and it's as good a car as you could have. Oh. It doesn't break down. It a uh, great driving car, and very comfortable. Oh, sure. Very nice. No mileage at all. Huh. Just a couple little trips to town, and it's a V8, so I don't drive it much. But I just renewed my license. Yeah. Nice. Just renewed it. So it's good for four years, but uh, it'll outlast me and huh. and uh, the license, I'm sure. Yeah, you never know. What is that your favorite car you've had, or did you have a? Oh no, I had I had uh, a couple of the large Buicks, you know. Yeah. I, I had a Park Avenue, but I had the one that was another name before it was Park Avenue. I had Oldsmobile. I had one small Mercury that was terrible. One Ford is all I ever had. I bought a new Ford way back in the in the fifties, probably. Okay. But uh, I had a Chevy wagon. I had Plymouth. Huh. Uh, but I think I like Buicks. I had several Buicks. Yeah. Several Buicks. Quite a few of them. Huh. And one that I traded in for this car was had lots of miles on it. It was okay. a Sabre. Oh yeah. But uh, that's a very memorable car because it was pre-war and it was my first car. Oh, I bet. I kind of forgot if I paid 1200 bucks for it or something. Yeah. Something like that. From the dealer? Yeah, from the dealer. Nice. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I never had to go back uh, to get anything done. Well, they probably weren't moving very many cars during the war. Oh, they weren't. They were just sitting Nobody there waiting for you to come They home. would keep driving them, you know. Yeah. Huh. Yep. Well, um, we probably could wrap this up soon here. Do you have any um, life advice that you want to give future generations that might watch this, <laughs> if we have this on a video or well, lesson I, that you've learned? I quit smoking 50 years ago. I must have been in my 30s when I quit smoking, and I never was a heavy smoker. Okay. And I used to drink quite a bit, uh, quite often, but now I had uh, I had a beer the other day on Veterans Day, and that was yeah. the first one in a month. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, watch what you eat, and uh, of course we've always had exercise. I, I golfed all those years. Oh, sure. I fished a lot, and I hunted some in pheasant season, huh. and uh, so we did a lot of outdoor stuff. I had a snowmobile, and I did I did winter skiing quite a bit for a number of years with my kids, and uh, so 
So we exercised a lot, you know. Sure. But uh, just watch what you eat. And uh, like Dr. Langenfeld says, maybe you're over your pains. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're too old for them now. <laughs> well, I'm hoping that's true, but. Yeah, you look uh, like you're. I pray every night, you know, for family and sure. st myself. Good. And uh, people in church and so forth. All my family. Yeah. And thank goodness not one family member has uh, COVID yet. Yeah. But a lot of them are dead, you know. All, all three brothers are dead and uh, sister Your just... Your siblings and stuff. My sister just died in January at 99. Mm. She she actually in the year hit 100, but she was only 99 years old. But she lived to be 99. Were you the baby of the family then? No, no. I was second from the bottom. Oh, you Okay. Second, second youngest. Okay. This younger brother that went to Gustavus was a uh, uh, couple of years younger. Okay. The rest were all older. Huh. But they were only a year or two apart. Sure. Two years at the most. Yeah. Well, is there any anything else about the wartime experience that we didn't cover that you would want to mention? Well, just the fact that they neglected us all these years. And uh, we had senators, and we had we had senators in Washington, and well, the House of Representatives, two years in a row, unanimously passed us to get a bonus, you know, whether certain amount of money, yeah, twenty five or fifty bucks or whatever, yeah, uh, five hundred, I mean, you know. yeah, but the Senate wouldn't even put it on the floor, huh, in both both years. And they, they were fighting it last year. They were still hoping we'd get. Alaska, no, uh, Canada got everybody got twenty five, twenty five hundred or something. Yeah. Long years ago. Yeah. The Merchant Marine, but they uh, they they're dying off so fast now. This that, is not happening here. But right? they're not going to get it, you know. But there were people. People. There's still people. Uh, one lady I remember. She's still plugging for it. Yeah, you know? good. Well, who knows? You know. Now I keep looking at that picture above you, and can you tell me a little bit about your trip to uh, D.C. for the honor flight? Oh, that your was brothers? Uh, well. That that was great. We uh, three of us went together, three brothers, and we all went to Rochester. Got on the plane. They treated you like a king, you know. Yeah. Of course, they had loads of people in wheelchairs, too. Yeah. But we took a big plane. We went directly to Washington, D.C., got on uh, buses. I think one of them uh, got on and the, the buses took us to all these, uh, especially our memorial, yeah. the World War II, but we saw the others, too. Okay. You know? And uh, I don't know where we ate, but it was good. Whatever we had was great. And we made it home. Uh, we saw a new Washington D.C. That bus took us through. Oh, we could okay. see the Capitol. And one lady was one girl from Minnesota. Uh, and one guy from uh, Emmitsburg, still in Emmitsburg or whatever it is, south of Rochester. He was a guide, and he was a terrific guy. Oh. And I still correspond with him. Oh, nice. But that young girl was uh, from uh, Minnesota. And she knew every one of these buildings as we drove oh, by, you know. Nice. Yeah, it was amazing. It kind of makes, she was sharp as a tack. Makes the trip more enjoyable to yep. learn about stuff. But then we get on the, we get on, just before we get on the plane at the airport, they had a band there and they had us dance. Oh. And they had a bunch of gals there, see. Oh. They had lipstick, so they uh, would, they put lipstick uh, all over us and try to embarrass us. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I got pictures of I that. I see the picture up there. It looks like maybe in the corner there. Yeah, I got pictures of uh, that. It's yeah, a that fun might experience. Be, yeah, that might be one of the girls. Let's see if it is. Yeah, in the corner see, there. Yeah, see that's where it. And one girl grabbed me. I didn't want to dance. She grabbed me. We danced. <laughs> but this one came. This one came around and kissed you on the cheek. Yeah. By, by all three of us had you get fun. the whole experience. Huh? Yeah, it was a, it was a, 
pre pre war, uh, let's say the dance, you know. Yeah. So that, that was it. And then we flew home, and we had a huge crowd. Oh sure. In Rochester, that, waiting yeah. for us. Nice. Before we distributed uh, to get home. That was a good know. experience then. Oh, it was a great experience. Yeah. Huh. It was a great experience. Oh. They're still doing it, I think. I think so too. But see, then they were doing it already for Koreans and uh, starting to get more of the Korean War yeah, vets in and there. And vets and the and the other war too, Vietnam. Yeah. That was a funny war, wasn't it? Yeah. Before I forget, you wanted to talk about your discharge paper there. Well, people say you know, I had a guy even in Waseca that played pool with me. He doesn't believe to this day that I was a military, see, uh -huh. a veteran. Yeah. But he never saw this. You yeah. See. This this gives the discharge of the United States Coast Guard and yeah. the date and everything else. That I've got it. I've got it framed up there. Oh, nice! And it's signed by the commanding officer or something. And K. A. Martin, C. A. P. U. S. Coast Guard, commanding officer, National Maritime Service. Nice. Yeah, this is nice. This is a copy, and then I had another one apparently. That I framed. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's very oh, nice. Oh, this is a copy of that act. The yeah. actual one is there? Yeah. Nice. I think it's a copy. Yeah. So uh, I never was worried about being in the. We didn't get any. Here's what we did we got recognition in 1988. Oh. Now you know how long that is after the war. Yeah. 88, they recognized every one of us in, in the Merchant Marine. And gave us credit for this and credit for that for time, and that's where we got all these uh, yeah. notices. And I got, I got paid for being in these war zones. Oh, okay. But a lot of them in the Mercury didn't get a cent, you know. Ah, uh, sure. But when they were discharged. Yeah. But anyway, uh, then I could join the, the uh, which I did the uh, Legion. Okay. Couldn't belong to the Legion before that. Oh, until you got the. Yeah. Uh, Forty-five years later, yeah, so or whatever. that happened in '88, but that was just a little sampling. Of, yeah. But they at least recognized the, yeah. the U.S. But to this, then we used to have a yearly legion. I suppose it would be around uh, November in Waseca, The legion that have a recognize every one of the services. Okay. And sing the song. Oh sure. Well, we had a guy down there, that that uh, one guy in Janesville. We've got our we've got our name on a five a, a five cornered uh, re, well renewal thing. Oh sure. It, it says U.S. Merchant Marine. Oh nice. And he he developed a, a real nice song, but they a lot of times they'd forget. Oh. So when I. Well, I even went locally here to this legion or to the senior center one time. They were recognizing all these songs, so I told the lady, I said, you know, uh, we don't only have a very nice song, we have a very nice discharge, everything. Sure. And she says, oh, I'm glad to know that. They, they left it out, you know, they, they didn't huh. play the Merchant Marines. Yeah. So, and you uh, had a separate song. For the Merchant Marines, separate from the Coast Guard right. song? Oh, okay. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. It's got good words to it. Yeah. About merchandise, but hooray for, the, hooray for the Merchant Marine. See, we were called U.S. Maritime Service. Okay. You know, that's what a lot of this stuff was U.S. Maritime Service. Oh, this is from the American Forces of the United States of America. Nice. I don't think you want any of that other stuff. All right. Well, thanks, Marvin. Thanks for your time and thanks for your service. You bet. Thank it's you. It's been great talking to you today. Now I can have lunch. Yeah, you can. Yeah, both of us <laughs> can have lunch and have a drink of water or something. Well, I I'll have lunch and I might have a little cup of my coffee. Okay. Thank you so much.